all look like in terms of the student, the pupil. So I'm going to share a detailed case study with you. Okay, so from September to July, new arrival, okay? I'm going to call him Artur, and this is Artur's initial assessment. I will read the opening sentence and then the second paragraph, okay? He says, only boys in school are the best because everybody is understand each boy. Basically, he's saying, thank God I'm in a single sex school. <laughs> That is actually what Arthur is saying. I'm pleased it's not mixed, okay? That's what he wrote, right? right? Okay, second paragraph. My happy day in my life is when I go to the football match, Arsenal London, Chelsea London. I very like play a football match, a football. My best team in English Premiership is Arsenal London, and my second favourite team, Chelsea London, etc. This writing throws up three major issues. Let's deal with the biggest one first. That's his allegiance to a particular football team. <laughs> um, I did spend two months desperately trying to uh, get Arthur to change his mind towards another club, the real club in North London. Okay? Uh, I think people might understand what I mean by that. Okay? Now, the second issue this throws up has to do with, I don't know, social cultural competence. Now, let's make up a new term. London competence. This new arrival does not understand London's tribes. London has tribes. This is something that his PE teacher picked up, and I remember his PE teacher, teacher talking to Artur. He said, look, Artur, you don't want to look different to the others, do you? He said, no, it's um, Look, you either support Arsenal or Chelsea, but you don't say you like both of them. Oh, OK, I've got it. And then he made his unfortunate choice. <laughs> Now, we can say he's definitely level one secure as an arrival. Probably, he's probably in the level two area in old money, but he's not a beginner. He's not a beginner. He's definitely emerging in his use of English. Yeah. September initial assessment. Now, in terms of when it was highly controlled writing, he had no problems. So this is two months on. Uh, I'm working with a science teacher with a number of EL students in the class, and this is bog standard EL practice, nothing flashing here at all. They're measuring the calorific value of a peanut, they're burning it. And what I've done is I've made sure that all the Yale students have got uh, the instructions and I've insisted they must tick each box when each stage is done. So I'm focusing them on the instructions. And then after that, I asked them to underline all the imperatives. And then I gave them a box standard matching activity where students write the imperatives next to a teacher prepared list. So we're focusing on the past ten. So very simple stuff here, okay? Why I'm doing it though is because even my fluency scale at the beginner level, I have a commitment to make sure that my students are secure in the first 80 most common irregular verbs. Okay? Words like help. Okay? And then with an initial sentence prompt, he's away. And he can say so very controlled writing and no problem. However, free writing. This is uh, three months later in history and it's first draft unaided writing. Five, five steps to war is the one of Adolf Hitler's plan to win with all the world and he won't be a king of all the world. The first step is about army, Adolf Hitler when he won't fight with other countries. He must have a very good army, Adolf Hitler tells the big German people very good things he give and he goes on. What does this student have? In this writing he uses these devices, he understands in Polish the notion of cohesion and the genre he's got to deal with, okay? So he says the first step, Adolf Hitler, he give, another step is, the next, the step four is, the last step. So he has a sense of what he's got to do. Uh, and this was marked, by the way, by wiser heads than mine, who are more than happy to give this a level three, and he was also level three for history, okay? And now you can see he's moved on. He's no longer emerging, you know, he's now developing his use of English. Still a lot of work to do. That's a February 1st draft. But if you don't do anything about this, he's going to stick there. Because he needs grammatical resources in order to progress in history. Okay? If he wants to progress, he's got to be able to talk about intentions and opinions. He's got to be able to give different views on events. And he's got to be able to incorporate his own interpretations. And amongst other things, to do this, he needs to develop modality and he needs to, de he needs to develop past perfect tenses, okay, and, and past tenses. Okay, let's look at some of the support. 
Now, this is a lot of dense text. Uh, there is evidence from Dunkirk, eight sources the kids were given uh, from the history teacher. In the meantime, a tight column of men was moving on the battered quay where a small ship was tied up. And then it goes on about moorings, decks, crowded as a rush hour, tube compartment, etc. So, the first thing you've got to do here is start with the big picture. So, because they will be overwhelmed by all this text. So, we simply said to the old pupils, count the number of sources on the sheet. Which is German, which is British, which is another. And then, focus down on the vocabulary. So, vocabulary of sea and ship. So, you've got to go down just one or two sources. You can't do all eight with them. And idiomatic expressions as well. And then, give them a short and simplified text to reinforce the big picture in the past tense. However, this was one of the things that helped him move on. Okay? On cards, I took four bits of text on the left, what happened, cards, and then I wrote what I think, cards, and got him to match them up. Okay? This is something I believe Lynn Cameron has, has, has referred to before in the past. You know, sometimes you've just got to put the academic language on the table for the students. Because if you don't do it, they're going to get it. All right? Okay. And this is him doing the matching activity. Okay. There was also some bog standard references to past and perfect tenses. Okay. Now, he's developing. And this is May now. And he's writing about Kennedy's choices during the Cuban Missile Crisis. I think the best choice for President Kennedy will be blockade. In this choice are a lot of good things. USA can show for USSR it is serious, but it's not big reason for start war. Okay. The writing task they were given in the class was to discuss all of Kennedy's choices. He had about seven his advisors gave him. How did you respond to this serious war threatening crisis? What Arthur's done is he's only focused on one, the blockade one. I think he's done it because he's secure and knows he can write about it. I think. I wish I'd asked him. Okay? But here, that writing, what can we say? Around about level four, applying old APP criteria, definitely developing broad EAL phase. Now, I wanted to revisit this because we should have done more work on modality with the history teacher. And the history teacher was very accommodating, said, fine, we're going to go back to this task do a bit of work with the whole class, look at the modals that would help, and this is what we did. We gave them the seven options, and we gave them a simple example like this. You get the idea? However, that's not how the students got it. What we did was, we said to them, right, put yourself in Kennedy's shoes. If it's number one, it's a dilemma, what would you do? If it's number two and three, is it, if it's a decision you've got to make, or is it a course of action, which mode would you choose? And in the fourth one, again, if it's a decision or a course of action, which one would you choose? Now, if we had time, I'd get you to do this, but we haven't. <laughs> We're nearly there. Okay. He then goes on to write and explain the work of the United Nations. The United Nations was given greater powers to agree to the use of force if necessary, but the League of Nations doesn't have that power like the United Nations had. The United Nations had also Security Council, which was Britain, France, Soviet Union, USA. The United Nations could only work in etc. etc. Okay? Now, typical ELLs, articles. Okay? I could kick myself reviewing this bit of writing. Articles are fiendishly difficult to teach, particularly for Polish learners. However, where, you, where they are easy to teach, is in geographical place names and institutions and bodies. And were I revisiting this, I would have given him a list, like the House of Representatives, yeah, Parliament. I would have given him a list, which could, do you see what I mean? Yeah, but I didn't, but never mind. Issues with tense still, occasional tense. But we think the modality work from the previous lesson has helped. Yeah? So he's moved on with his use of modals. Okay? Now, that writing, again, look at the old criteria, nudging towards level 5C, and he's now the consolidating the AL phase. Okay? 
Okay. And he achieved level five plus in history, and that's his history teacher. So you can see the progress he's made. Okay. When we think of fluency scales, maybe we should also be thinking in terms of what I call key competency milestones. I just think we have to be much more explicit about language than we have been. I really do, but that's another story. Okay, so what we could be thinking about is at the beginning literate level, at the bottom, and this was something for those of you who use the old QCA steps up to level one, yeah? One of the things about that scale that has served us so well um, was that you, you could write at step two at length. But if it was meaningless to a teacher who hadn't worked with that student, it stayed at step two. In order to be level one, I think it, it needed to be legible. So that should be a key competency milestone at the beginner literate phase, really, I think. But certainly at the consolidating level, you know, if we're not working on an extensive range of modals, if we're not looking at extensive range of tenses, if we're not looking at that range of embedded clauses, subordination, etc. You know, what are we doing? And now, Artur, you have left Artur. Tell me where Artur is now. He's at the beginning of the consolidating phase. The real work starts now. <laughs> and I would suggest that in the past, with a lot of fluency scales, maybe we haven't done enough work at that phase. That would be my, my view. Last thing. At the beginner literate level, you'd hope that students can compose some simple sentences, possibly not the connectives. Okay. Now, a lot of fluency scales, what they do is they have a final column. I'm thinking of the Welsh ones uh, I saw from Paul Torbert recently, where they talk about strategies. They say, well, if you want them to do this, here are some strategies, which is useful. But I think you should go beyond that. What you should do is put things in that would be the scaffold to move them up the next level. Okay. And I haven't got time to show you the example, okay? It's a different student. Um, but someone that is beginner, literate, writing simple sentences that are modeled and do it on their own, perhaps they could produce complex sentences via a substitution table, for example, okay? Right, I need to stop now uh, because I'm, way over, I'm over time just. And um, I'll just leave you with one thought. Um, we have a constant and his group from Cambridge. I believe working over these next 18 months on a primary scale and a secondary scale, correct? Yeah. Okay, so I leave you the words, no pressure then.